Hello guys and welcome to the second part of the animating in Blender video tutorial, I am the creator of the game called Snappy Mouse Run. In the previous video we have created the armature, finished the skeleton and in this video we will attach the body to the skeleton and paint some weights. Let's go to object mode and see what we've got. In the outline under the mouse collection we have the armature, the body and the eyes as separate objects. The goal is to attach the body and eyes to the armature. Select the armature, go to edit mode, press tab. If we select a bone and go to bone properties you will see the deform section which is active by default for each bone. This means that this bone can deform the mesh that's attached to it. We want that all bones deform the mesh except for the two root bones which serve more like handles for the skeleton. Let's uncheck the deform checkbox for those two. To be more specific, every bone with the deform property active can control a set of vertices of the mesh. The vertices will be grouped into so-called vertex groups and each bone will get its own group. The groups are part of the mesh, if we go back to object mode and select the body, under properties object data, you will see the vertex group section that's currently empty for this object. Let's generate the groups. We'll achieve this by parenting. Select the object first, then shift select the armature, press ctrl P, the set parent menu pops up and we are interested in the armature deform section. Here all three options will generate vertex groups. The first with empty groups will generate empty vertex groups while the other two will in addition automatically assign vertices to them. We'll look at the other two options in a moment. First we need to understand how vertex groups work, so I will start with this one and generate empty vertex groups first. Notice in the outliner that the armature is now the parent of the body object. Next, if we select the body, under modifiers we can see that the armature deform modifier was added and under object data vertex groups we can see the created groups. For every bone that has the deform property active, a group with the same name was created. For instance, the group head is the group controlled by the head bone. It's really important that you name your bones before so you can easily find the matching group. Let's assign the vertices to the group. With the object selected, go to edit mode, new options will appear under vertex groups. Now we want the whole head to be controlled by the head bone. I'll turn on x-ray, go to side view by pressing 3 on the numpad and select the whole head including the ears. Turn off x-ray, select the head group and press assign. The selected vertices are now assigned to the group. It doesn't matter in which selection mode you're in, it will assign the corresponding vertices. Obviously the remove button removes vertices from the group. Let's select some other vertices. If we press the select button, the vertices from the selected group are added to the selection and if we press the deselect button, the same vertices are removed from the selection. Let's see if the assignment worked. Go to object mode, select the armature and since we want to see the bones in action, change the mode to pose mode. Select the head bone, press G to move and the mesh follows the bone. The eyes are still not attached but the rest moves. While moving the head bone around you will notice that the parts that are not attached to the bone get stretched really bad. That's because each assigned vertex is equally affected by the bone. The bone influence on particular vertices is defined by so called weights and the weights are visualized in the weight paint mode. In order to properly enter the weight paint mode, first enter object mode, select the armature, then shift select the object you want to weight paint and switch to weight paint mode. Now make sure the face and vertex selection masking are turned off, it's an easy thing to miss. Here you can select particular bones and inspect their weights. The nice thing is that you can also move the bones around as in pose mode, paint the weights and see the changes in action. Press ctrl and select the head bone. Under object data, the head vertex group gets selected, because this group is controlled by the head bone. In the viewport you can see the group weights. The red color represents maximum weight, blue represents no weight and yellow and green the transition between. We assigned all the head vertices to the head group, so the whole head has maximum weight and is painted red. By control selecting other bones, the object turns blue since there are no vertices assigned yet. But if we for instance control select the root bone for which we previously disabled its deform property, the whole object turns purple. That means that there was no vertex group created for this bone. Now control select the head bone again. The transition is obviously too hard here, let's smooth it out by reducing weights. Weight painting works similar to texture painting. Since the settings are more or less a small subset of the texture paint settings, I will not go through all of them in detail. If you want to know more about painting tools, then you can check out my previous videos on texture painting. The easiest way to paint the weights is by using the draw tool with the draw brush. So make sure it's selected, under stroke make sure stroke method is set to space and change the spacing to about 2% so the brush gets applied more frequently. Now except for the standard F shortcut to adjust the radius, shift F shortcut to adjust the strength, there is also a control F shortcut to adjust the weight. We want to remove weights so control F and bring the weight down to zero. Max out brush strength by pressing shift F, adjust the brush size by pressing F and start removing the weights. As we remove weights, we see that the head bone influence is reduced and the mesh looks less deformed.
Interestingly, you cannot remove the vertices from the group by removing weights. The only way to remove them from the group is in edit mode. They will remain in the group with zero weight. On the contrary, if you paint over a vertex that's not in the current group, it will be automatically assigned to the group, even if you paint empty weights like we are doing. Now we know how vertex groups and weights work. If we continue to assign weights for every single bone by hand for an object like this or for more complex objects, it's a waste of time. Only in rare cases you will want to create empty groups and assign weights by hand like we did before. However, this approach can be useful if you have for instance exploding objects or an object that falls apart. You know that every piece will be controlled by a single bone and this way it's easy to assign the vertices to them. As said earlier, Blender can also automatically assign weights, but it's very important to reset the pose first. Select all the bones by pressing A, press Alt R to reset the bones rotation and just to be sure press Alt S to reset the scale. Control select the head bone and go to the weights menu. Here you will find two options for automatic weights assignment that are related to the ones we saw earlier in the set parent menu. I will explain the second option that uses envelopes in a moment and choose the assign automatic from bones option first. It automatically assigns the weights based on the bone proximity to the mesh. We can do this for every single bone or select all bones by pressing A and assign weights for all at once. Now all bones are weight painted automatically with pretty decent results. Let's look at those two options in the set parent menu. Back to object mode, select the object first, then shift select the armature and press ctrl P. The width automatic weights option will create the vertex groups and automatically assign weights for all bones the same way as the previously used option in weight paint mode. For most objects, this option is the recommended approach. Now the second with envelope weights option here and also the one we saw before in weight paint mode also automatically assigns weights but uses a different algorithm that is based on bone envelopes. To visualize them we need to change the way the bones are displayed. Still in object mode, select only the armature, go to object data, viewport display and change the display as option to envelope. The bones now look like capsules and if we switch to edit mode and select a bone, we can see the envelopes of the selected bones. The envelope parameters can be found in the numbers panel item tab. The solid inside area is controlled by the head and tail radius. The transparent envelope is controlled by the envelope property or in the viewport the shortcut is Control alt s In the previous video I told you that the tip of the bone is called the head and the other side is called the tail. It's actually the other way around, this side is called the head and the tip is called the tail. It's not so relevant though, just to clear up the confusion. How does the envelope weights assignment work? Every vertex that's inside the solid area will get the maximum weight. Inside the transparent area the weights are distributed with the maximum weight at the solid part and drop to zero weight at the envelope border. A use case for this method would be if you have a lot of scattered mesh parts around the main mesh and the standard automatic assignment simply does not include them properly or gives bad results. Now to round up the assignment picture. Usually you would not use envelopes to assign the whole mesh but rather do the standard automatic assignment for the whole then adjust the envelopes only on certain bones and do the envelope assignments only for those. Next you would inspect the results and if still needed you would correct parts by hand in weight paint mode. Ok, the only separated mesh parts on our model are the eyes but they are a separated object and are therefore not assigned. In our case there is no need to use the envelopes so let's change the bones shape on the object data back to octahedral. We will just use the standard automatic assignment for the eyes. In object mode select the eyes first then shift select the armature press ctrl p and choose with automatic weights. Done. Body and eyes are assigned. Let's inspect the results now. Back to weight paint mode select the armature shift select the object and switch to weight paint. Control select the bones and move them around by pressing G. There could be some parts that need correction. Looks good for the most part but here on the head we want the ears to follow the head. We will add more weights to the ears manually. Make sure the draw brush is selected and the stroke method is set to space. The ears are rather thin so it would make sense to paint both sides at the same time. By default the brush paints only on the front facing faces but we can change that under brush settings, advanced and deactivate the front faces only option. Now the brush has also a depth component and will paint through the mesh. In addition on the fall off we can also define how the depth component should behave with the fall off shape options. Default is the sphere option which you can imagine like having a sphere instead of this circle and applying weights with that sphere. Here the depth component depends on the radius of the sphere. On the current fall off this would be the brush influence at the center of the sphere and this at the radius. The second projected option just projects the 2D circle from the view so it will paint through everything. It has an infinite depth component. We can go with any of these options since the ears are very thin. I will choose the projected option. Adjust the brush size by pressing F, press Ctrl F and max out the weight, press Shift F and max out the strength. 
Now if we paint onto the ears, we see that it also paints on the other side. But it also painted the mesh underneath and we don't want that. Undo this, press Ctrl Z. We can mask the area we want to paint with the paint mask option. Now press tab to switch to edit mode and under object data, make sure the head vertex group is selected. Press A to deselect everything and press select to select the already assigned vertices. Now just press tab again and switch back to weight paint mode. Only the selected vertices are now masked and can be painted. The object is symmetrical on the X axis, so it makes sense to mirror the weights. Go to brush symmetry and enable X mirror. Make sure the brush paints through the mesh. Now as we apply weights to one ear, it also gets mirrored to the other. The back side is also painted and no accidental painting on the rest of the mesh. The head is a solid piece, so it should not bend. Let's also apply a bit here at the top. And on the sides as well. This looks good. Now turn off paint mask, disable X mirror, and that's it for this video. We attached the body to the skeleton, covered the different methods of assigning weights to the mesh, and can now control the pose of our object. In the next video, we will look into more advanced animating features and start animating. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my previous rigging video where we created the armature. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Give a like and subscribe if you found this video useful and want to see more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.